Hey guys, how you doing? This is your boy Rich from Rich TV Live, and you too can join the club at richpicksdaily.com where you can learn how to win and trade. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I am your host, Rich, and we have Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Ben Samaru, the CEO of Wonderfy Technologies. How are you doing today, Ben? Hey, Rich, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Big day for Bitcoin today, right around 43,000, Ethereum over 3,000. So really excited to have you on the show today. And my first question is the BitBuy acquisition. What does it mean for Wonderfy Technology and its shareholders? The BitBuy acquisition, I mean, I couldn't be more excited about it. So it is the leading crypto exchange in Canada. They have over 400,000 users. They've done over $5 billion in transaction volume to date. So they've been around, super established brand. And they were also the first licensed marketplace in Canada. So they were granted that license by the Ontario Securities Commission in November. So really kind of a first mover in compliance and regulation. What really drew me to the company was the, the brand and the management team. Uh, I think... You know, as, as we've talked about before, we've been looking at a number of different acquisitions in the centralized exchange space. And so we're, we're familiar across Canada and with, with, a, with a number of different exchanges in, in other jurisdictions. But BitBuy's management team is uh, extremely talented and they're, uh, what they bring to the table is really experience from traditional financial institutions. And I see that as setting them up for growth into new markets. So that's, you know, that's something that's really important for us. We, we don't want to uh, you buy a stagnant asset. We, you know, we want to really find something that has a lot of synergies. That's obviously accretive to Wonderfy and that we can work uh, with them on growing. So that's, that's really the big differentiator for BitBuy. So this, this deal opens up uh, a, a ton of different opportunities for us. And, um, and from a, uh, you know, from a shareholder standpoint, it, BitBuy did uh, around 32 million in revenue over the last 12 months, and we're just seeing that number grow. Um, it allows us to expedite the growth of our Wonderfy app uh, using BitBuy's user base, and there's a number of different synergies across the the products and the companies uh, as well as you can probably imagine as as they're you know in 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 very uh, you know similar uh, areas and both uh, retail consumer facing. And, uh, and, and so that's, you know, the, a few of the points of, of uh, what this, what this really means uh, for Wonderfy. And it's also the, you know, it's the largest uh, crypto acquisition in Canadian history. Uh, wow. So, you know, I think we're, we're all, both teams are really proud of that. And um, I personally think it's going to be the starting gun for a consolidation in the space, which, uh, which I, I think has been coming for a long time. Very, very excited and can't wait until that is finally completed. Now, can you go through how this is the first acquisition of a regulated crypto exchange in Canada? And can you tell us what that was like? Yeah, absolutely. And I actually think I've, we've been trying to confirm this, but I think it might actually be the first uh, acquisition of a regulated exchange in, uh, in North America. Wow. There have been some in, in some smaller ones in, in Europe and other, and Asia, other jurisdictions, but uh, for a North American regulator, this looks like the first one. And part of that is because Canada was a first mover in granting these licenses. And, and like I said, BitBuy was the first uh, to get the, the full marketplace license. So uh, that's definitely a big milestone. Uh, I'd say working with the regulators, it's, uh, it's never easy, but this was actually quite a, uh, you know, quite a great experience. It forced the uh, Canadian regulators to get up to speed on DeFi because they had to understand what Wonderfy's business and business model was and, uh, and, and product as well. So that, that has definitely been um, you know, an interesting experience. And I think one that's, that's really important because the technology just starts to become more and more important, um, the decentralization aspect and, uh, and really giving customers and users the opportunity to own and control their own crypto assets, which is really what, what Wonderfy is all about. So it's been, you know, the, the process with the regulators been, has been great. Uh, and I think we, so we announced this acquisition uh, the first day back from, uh, from the holidays. So I think it was January 5th and, um, and we got the regulatory approval from the, from the OSC last week. 
and we'll be closing it before the end of March. So, you know, in under three months, uh, we'll have announced and, and closed it. And, and just to uh, put some perspective around the acquisitions of regulated entities and the time that that can take, especially in the crypto space. So Galaxy announced the acquisition of BitGo in May 2021, and they're expecting it to, uh, to close in Q2 this year. So I'm not trying wow. to compare Bit, BitGo to BitBuy just because the, the size obviously is, uh, is you know, it's a, it's a 10x basically, but it gives you a sense that's, you know, that's well over a year from, um, from announcement to closing. And so I'd say credit due to the Canadian regulators for, for moving quite quickly on, uh, on helping us to get this across the line. And I think, you know, part of it is, Wonderfly is a public company, um, you know, everything from kind of governance to audited financials to, um, you know, all of the standards that we have to uh, comply with for, for being listed on a, um, on a senior exchange like the NEO in, in Canada sort of uh, helps to vet uh, us as the acquirer and, uh, and all the changes that are, you know, that, that sort of flow from that. But, uh, but yeah, I, I just wanted to sort of offer that example up as, uh, as a, a, another uh, recent crypto acquisition uh, of a regulated entity and, and put some perspective around uh, the timing for, for this bit by acquisition. Yeah, I'm super excited. I can't wait to see what the company is going to look like with bit by part of their financials. It's going to be an absolute game changer. All of those customers, all of that revenue flowing through the company. It's going to be very exciting. Do you see further consolidation happening in the crypto space? Definitely, especially in the exchange space, in the centralized exchange space, I think the market is really crowded. If we look at just Canada, I think there's there's over 30 centralized exchanges in Canada. Wow. And yeah, the, the number the number is, is really high. There's obviously a handful of leaders, uh, you know, bit by being at the at the top of the pile. But what that means is companies are are really fighting on marketing spend to acquire customers. So the the, the customer acquisition cost for a crypto user trader is just going like this. And, and then when you look into other markets where some of these global players are like your FTXs and your Coinbase uh, who have, uh, you know, essentially unlimited marketing spend, uh, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's an extremely, extremely competitive market. So I think that does open up a lot of conversations and opportunities for people to combine forces that have, similar products, similar target uh, customers, and see the value of being able to grow a company together versus trying to do it standalone. So that's, you know, I think you're, 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 those conversations are happening at the centralized exchange level. And, and then we're definitely seeing, you know, I, I talked about this acquisition as sort of a starting gun for consolidation in this space, which, which I really believe it is. I can, I can tell you that we've had a lot of um, you know, inbound and conversations that have been sparked because of this acquisition, because people see that Wonderfy is, uh, so not only a, the consolidator now, because we've, we've started to, to do that with BitBuy, but also really the only um, vehicle that is uh, owning and, and sort of offering DeFi and uh, CeFi products. And, and I think there's, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of benefits to doing that. It's, uh, you know, it, it's something that's that's future proof in a sense where we're not staying sort of invested in the uh, purely in the CFI market, but really investing in the high growth area of, of DeFi as well. And so we're, we're seeing a lot of kind of conversations around consolidation pop up around that. And then I think also in the in a, in a market like this, the consolidation opportunities grow because it's harder to raise capital. Um, people, you know, companies don't want to go at things on their own. And so it, you know, I think the the market is is very, very, very ripe for consolidation at, at, at this point, and and we're you know we're actively looking at at opportunities there. Now you touched on this a little bit, Ben. Why does owning DeFi and CeFi differentiate Wonderfi? Right. So it's so I think from a so I'll I'll cover it from two perspectives from a from an investor shareholder perspective. Being able to own Wonderfi stock means you have exposure to uh, CeFi in BitBuy, exposure to, to DeFi in the Wonderfi product. And then we, we've also, um, I, I think you were talking to Kong a few weeks ago about, um, uh, about uh, the, the play to earn gaming and NFT side of 
of Wonderfly, which we're which we're rolling out soon. And so it's really this this whole exposure to, to digital assets that doesn't really exist like you sh- uh, with other companies. Like you, you'll see um, standalone centralized exchanges, standalone uh, DeFi apps or protocols, uh, standalone gaming companies. And so there's you know what what we what we see is really this big opportunity to realize synergies across these products and then also just create this unified experience for people. So um, a, at the risk of using uh, something that's incredibly overused, it's really this Apple ecosystem where you have all these different products that all tie back to digital assets and then being able to offer single sign-on across uh, across these products and, and really being able to uh, capitalize on users that you're drawing in for something like gaming and then being able to offer uh, uh, DeFi products to them, um, buying and selling Bitcoin and ETH through uh, through a license exchange, and so on and so forth. So the synergies are are very real from a um, from sort of a product perspective. And then one of the things that I, I think is is a real benefit of this is it increases our ability to innovate. So having a non custodial product has different implications uh, than a, a centralized um, exchange as uh, you know, a, a, as I think, you know, and so what, what it allows us to do is offer new products through Wonderfy and enter into new markets quicker than we would be able to, to on the bit buy side. So it allows us to test products, test markets, and really explore what the demand and, and usage is for those products and what the user segments look like in those markets. Um, before making a capital investment on the bit buy side to expand in, into those areas. So it's it's really interesting from a product and a market perspective, and then also from this uh, unified user uh, journey that we're seeking to um, to, to, to create for, for our Wonderfy users. So one of the questions that our community was very interested in is, what is the entire revenue generation strategy for Wonderfy? Sure. So it's it's pretty simple on the wonderfy uh, wonderfy app side so we're not generating or charging uh, so we're not generating revenue or charging fees um, to users right now part of the reason for that is as uh, you know probably a lot of your viewers know the transaction fees gas fees on ethereum are are still extremely extremely high and we're just trying to lower the the barrier to entry as much as possible. So um, unlike other platforms, we're not, you know, we're not uh, taking a fee on top of that right now. What we're trying to do is just really improve the product, um, you know, get as many users uh, in as we can and really just create a good experience for them. And uh, as scaling solutions are uh, are developed, that's going to lower the network fees and then allow us to um, you know, to reasonably implement uh, a, a transaction fee. So it would be a, a, a sort of a, a per transaction fee that Wonderfy would implement and, um, and, and scale that in, you know, in, in the traditional way that you would see through, um, you know, through any product that uh, offers like trading services or, or in the crypto space. So that's the, that's the Wonderfy side, which is a transaction fee. Uh, on the BitBuy side, that's the, again, the traditional centralized exchange model. And uh, and Bitbuy has uh, you know a very established uh, track record of, of revenue. I, I mentioned you know over thirty two million in, in revenue over the last twelve months, and we we expect that number to to just continue to grow. And then on the Wonderfy Interactive side, there are uh, a couple of different avenues for monetization. There, one is in app purchases, which is basically uh, you know allowing people to. Um, you know, to, to, to buy certain accessories and, you know, levels and characters uh, within the game. And then the other aspect, which we expect to be a big on-ramp for customers into Wonderfy and into BitBuy is uh, the, this play to earn aspect. So being able to earn, for example, uh, a Kevin O'Leary character, uh, an uh, uh, NFT character, uh, if you pass a certain level, which you can then claim through your Wonderfy wallet. And then the idea there is being able to Offer that uh, NFT for trading uh, through uh, through Wonderfy and or Bitbuy, and that um, uh, we that would bring us back to a, a transaction fee as well. So so really, if we kind of zoom out, it it's you know we're we're trying to offer the you know the most diverse and compelling set of products to people uh, throughout this ecosystem, and then uh, there's there's transaction fees that happen throughout uh, as people are kind of you know captive within uh, within Wonderfy. 
Fantastic. Really excited to see the revenue grow. And we must remind everyone that Wonderfy is essentially a startup. So considering the fact that you guys have only been in business for a few months, you guys are doing quite well. And with this bit by acquisition, I think it's going to be absolutely game changing. Like you talked about over 30 million in revenue. So considering we're dealing with a startup uh, less than a year old and very soon 30 million in revenue in the company, I think you guys are definitely starting off really, really nicely as a, as a startup company with some, some teeth. Now, what's in store for Wonderfy over the next few months? Any catalysts that investors can look forward to uh, for Wonderfy? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, every every month is a, is an extremely busy month, and we have a lot of a lot that's in the pipe. So, with uh, this bit by closing, it's uh, what we've been doing behind the scenes is is uh, planning out the growth of bit by. So we're really looking at growing it more within Canada, which is an established market for BitBuy. And uh, more importantly, we're, we're looking at growing BitBuy in other uh, regional markets. So we're looking at uh, markets like Australia, which have um, a lot of similarities to the Canadian market. And BitBuy has a, um, a deal with Kogan.com in Australia, which is um, the, the biggest online retailer over there for us to be able to use um, their marketing services and, uh, and, and mailing list basically to, um, to, to offer uh, this, the, the bit by product to, to those uh, millions of users over there. So that's, um, that's a, a very significant deal, something that'll uh, differentiate us getting into that market. But really, we're going to be looking to to grow bit by aggressively uh, into, into international markets and, and take it global. We'll be expanding the Wonderfy product and really offering new access to new protocols and new um, opportunities within DeFi as they uh, as they un- continue to unfold and and become more tried and tested. Uh, because you know, again, with Wonderfy, we're 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 looking to create better access to DeFi, but not everything within DeFi. It's more of things that are tried and tested and safe for users to uh, to access. We'll be launching Wonderfy Interactive. Uh, and our first couple of games, which will feature uh, celebrity NFTs and um, uh, different unique brands within the games. Uh, so it's going to be a really engaging experience for people. And this this brand new on ramp, so people that don't even care about crypto or even know what it is, are going to be becoming Wonderfy and Bitby users by virtue of these games. And then we're working on Wonderfy Connect as well, which is uh, essentially single sign on across uh, all the brands within the Wonderfy ecosystem. So it's uh, you know, I think when you do consolidations like this, you run the risk, uh, like if you try and consolidate brands, you run the risk of user attrition. So, you know, if you have a couple hundred thousand users here, a couple hundred thousand here, and you try and merge the brands, uh, you're going to lose a significant amount of those users, uh, probably. Whereas what we're doing is, uh, is, is with strong brands like Bitby, we're maintaining the brand and then we're just creating connectivity across the two so that, if somebody sees a product on Wonderfy that they are interested in uh, that's not on BitBuy or vice versa, they can seamlessly move over, have shared credentials. So it's a really seamless process for them. And then we wow. actually might see, uh, you know, we might see that user base uh, grow and, and the, you know, the, the, the lifetime value of that user increase as well. Yeah, very excited to see all of this unfold. Congratulations on all of your success so far. We're here speaking with the CEO of Wonderfy Technologies, Ben Samaru. The symbol in Canada is WNDR. The symbol in America is WONDF. Now I must remind you that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. Full disclosure, I am an investor of Wonderfy Technologies, a proud investor. I'm a long-term investor because I believe in this sector. I've been in cryptocurrencies and investing in Bitcoin since 2017. You can see all those videos on YouTube when the price of Bitcoin was at 1,000. Today, the price of Bitcoin is sitting at just around 43,000 US. And I believe that we will see Wonderfy have similar growth trajectory being in one of the fastest growing sectors in the world in the cryptocurrency sector. And focusing on creating a regulated platform, which I believe is going to do really, really well. So love to know what you guys think. If you like these videos, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere and subscribe. 
And thank you for joining us today, the CEO of Wonderfy Technologies, Ben Samaru. Thank you for joining us today, Ben. Thanks so much, Rich. Always a pleasure. If you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a nice day. This is Rich from Rich to be Live with Ben Samaru, the CEO of Wonderfy Technologies, saying, have a nice day. We'll see you guys soon.